hey, these players are amazing and they are among the very best players in the world. Really give them a chance to prove it. Absolutely. And for Andrew, he has had some in-person experience. He is a regional semi-finalist in 2020, has made top 32 of the Latin American International Championships in 2017. Uh, there's also plenty more top 8 and top 16 placements in previous regionals. Going to be playing the Eternatus deck and uh, it's a good thing they're both in the winner's bracket because Andrew does not want to see this matchup. I think going into this, you have to expect Alan to be the favourite because he is playing two copies of Zama's Enter V and Andrew is playing a straight Eternatus list which has very few answers to that card. It's going to be very difficult. Let's head on over into the match then and see what Andrew can actually do. And you're right, Joe, it's going to be very difficult. That Zama's Enter V has got an ability which basically means it can't be damaged by Pokemon VMAXs. Unfortunately, the Eternatus VMAX deck, unless you're playing some crazy text, and unfortunately Andrew is not, you don't really have an answer to it. So you're talking about rushing prizes, you're talking about trying to boss's orders Pokemon off the bench if they're there, which they might well not be, or maybe <laughs> some weird poison plays with Crobat or Galarian Wheezing or things of that nature. Yeah, things do get a little bit rough. We are going to be following uh, Alan's side, of course, who is going to be leading off with the Lucario and Melmetal Tag Team GX. Pretty much in a matchup like this, when both players have complete knowledge of the opponent's deck, Alan wants to put down less than six prize cards, unless some of those prize cards are Zama's Enter Vs, because those are things that are super troublesome for Andrew. And if you're on Andrew's side, you're trying to rush down uh, Alan before he gets his optimal board state. Yeah, I mean, it really is that simple for Andrew. We need to see some aggressive plays, some faster plays, some maybe even some plays that we wouldn't necessarily see. It needs to be fill your bench, get your Eternatus, get your energy. Spiritomb is a viable attacker in this matchup. The problem is Spiritomb really doesn't do enough to KO a Zamazenta. It's going to be very easily KO'd by something like a Zamazenta. Maybe there's a route with multiple Spiritomb and things of that nature. But you see Andrew already, he's gone for the Eternatus, he's got the energy, he's going to attach to the Eternatus. Even though that Eternatus really struggles against Zamazenta, it's still your best option. And that's kind of where this matchup becomes hairy. And uh, so far there's only three draws from a Bird Keeper and also a Lily's Pokedoll, which acts as a secondary basic Pokemon. So the hand isn't great so far for Alan. Let's see if he draws into much. Doesn't really... The Goggles is helpful. That pushes you up to 290 hit points on your Lucario and Melmetal. He may choose to hold it, though, because it then just makes his Zamazenta even more difficult to deal with. But Alan has no draw whatsoever. No uh, Zacian. Uh, obviously, no Zamazenta, which is the card he wants to load up all of his energies onto. And no supporters to draw with. So the window's open for Andrew right now. Absolutely. We're asking a lot. I know we're asking for a lot. But <laughs> Energy, Eternatus VMAX, bunch more bench Pokemon and the boss's orders, there is, and admittedly awkward, but there is a route to a KO here on that Lucario Malmetal for free prizes. It's only got 260 HP, it is lower than your average Pokemon Tag Team GX, and there are no, the, the Meta Goggles isn't there. There's nothing to actually protect it, so it's asking a lot, but it is in range. We could even see, you know, a couple of Galarian Zigzagoon here, meaning that you would actually need, you know, not quite a full bench. You could actually leave a bench space here. Yeah, and uh, we already do see the switch. I'm actually kind of surprised we didn't see the energy turn one onto this Evil Tile because it's an easy way to just deal with a Pokedoll without this huge Wombo combo going on. Andrew's chasing the dream right now, but because he immediately attached to his Eternatus VMAX, you don't want to put that straight up into the active, you're not taking prizes for this KO, and the Lucario Melmetal is dangerous with even just one energy attached, so Andrew, by going aggressive with the Eternatus, has forced himself into a Marnie play here, and uh, yeah, may not even be attacking at all this turn. No, the combo is gone, and you definitely, don't, like you said, there's no point leaving it in the active, two energy on a Lucario and Melmetal means that you can attack and get rid of all the energy, and that's not where you want to be. Good news, a tag call. It, it's not perfect, but we do have supporter routes here. We've got Guzma and Halla, so at least we're going to be able to establish something on this side of the board here. Yeah, Alan actually plays two copies of Capture Energy, so this could be his first out into a Zamazenta, which is actually pretty huge. It's another turn where you're not attaching to the Zamazenta, but you don't mind two energies going on to Lucario Melmetal because it's just 
a good attack to have available. And this is just guaranteeing that, uh, oh my goodness, he's prized both. <laughs> How was he prized both of them? Oh, uh, this was his first search. I mean, he had the Guzma Hala, which was a search, but uh, wow, we're going to have to see a different approach here. It's a, what is it, a one in 50 to try and actually uh, prize both of a, of a two of. Uh, so yeah, wow, at least he hits the Intrepid Sword. That's pretty That's... good. Two outs allows him this more aggressive path instead. It does, but Zacian does not really match up well against an Eternatus VMAX. It can't attack two turns in a row without going to the bench. It can't get a one-hit KO, whereas Eternatus can keep attacking and keep KOing. And Andrew knows something is up here. There is absolutely no way whatsoever Alan does not get a Zamazenta there if there is a possibility of a Zamazenta. So Andrew, again, is very much going for... The boss's orders here, but you've got to think it's actually that Zacian that is going to be face down. If he could get an energy onto a reserve Eternatus here, which it looks like he's going to be able to, it doesn't even really matter. Oh, onto a Crobat as it happens. Yeah, it seems to be still prepping for a Zamazenta, more than likely. Uh, there is some argument to getting the Zacian first, because again, it's only five prizes that's been put onto Alan's board so far. And the draw three is obviously a big deal in a lot of situations. But yeah, uh, just loading up this Crobat for now. It may mean another turn of not attacking. Yeah, just another oh, no. money from Andrew. He's waiting just to have boss's orders. He wants to get the value while he can and not waste attachments, even with Evil Tal onto this uh, Poker Doll. But this doll has put so much work in already as more crushing hammers uh, coming down. It's going to hit heads on the Lucario Melmetal which is pretty nice. does give you the avenue to go Eternatus now if you want to. I still feel it's a little bit risky, even with the lower hand size that you've given Andrew. So yeah, just going to be a pass here. But this Pokedoll has stuck around two turns longer than I would have expected at the very least. Absolutely. And we know it's not there at the moment, but Andrew would be very vulnerable to a Pokemon catcher here because all Alan needs to do is take out a two prize Pokemon. If there's two Zamazenta in his six prizes and he's taking two prizes, that gives him a pretty good shot at getting a Zamazenta out of there. And I mean, that's got to be Alan's fault at this stage. It needs to be, look, let's just take some prizes because I know there's only five prizes on the board. If I can get Zamazenta out, I still win the game. So, I mean, this is worst case scenario for Alan, but if he can just take a couple of prizes, he is going to be in a much better position. Looks like we are going to be seeing the Guzma Hala for exactly that purpose, getting an energy drop down. Looking for the capture, the coating is the only viable energy if he wants to use uh, Zashi in this turn. So he is going to goggle up onto the Lucario Melmetal that keeps it out of range of any one-hit KO boss plays with Eternatus. Also is going to establish the... Uh, Cape of Toughness. Going to see the energy drop onto the Lucario and Melmetal by the looks of things. And probably just yeah. ending on Intrepid Sword with that attachment. Let's get another freebie, which is nice. <laughs> you, can't, you can't KO the Evil Tal. At this stage, Alan is in a really precarious position. He does not want to see that energy leave the field. You cannot potentially get... Well, definitely give it up. We know that the KO is on the board. You cannot give up that Zacian or that Lucario and Melmetal just for potentially taking out a, an evil tal. It's, it's not something that's really a viable option. So both players starting off being very cagey here, basically going, you know what? I I'm just going to wait until I can take an optimal KO. And finally, we see it. Andrew has found his first copy of Boss's Orders. Uh, there is no GX attack yet from the Lucario Melmetal. So the 270 is going to be enough for the KO here. Uh, so Eternatus coming in and swinging. Taking the first two prizes straight away. And this is really big because what can Lucario and Melmetal realistically KO? We do have an energy on that bench to Eternatus here, which is huge. Getting rid of all the energy on Eternatus, buying a couple of turns would be awesome. But now we're probably going to see a GX attack, get rid of the energy on the Eternatus. But with an energy and a VMAX, Andrew can just do his thing again. And it might not work for the entire series, but certainly for this game... What looked like a very, very unfavorable matchup, and it is on paper, really seems to be going Andrew's way here. Yeah, I think we certainly will see the GX attack. Grabbing more draw certainly makes sense, but he wants to try and have boss's orders. That that one Spiritomb is looking really, really tasty right now <laughs> for the easy get-out-of-jail-free one prize, and then you hope that you hit a Zamazenta off of those because you can't put any more Pokemon into play at this point because then Andrew can simply go around your Zamazenta even when you do find it. 
So we will see the full metal wall here, but currently no boss's orders uh, available for uh, for Alan. No, and with that combined with a lack of tool scrapper that in Andrew's list, I don't think he actually plays any. That means that Lucario and Melmetal is very much out of range. So essentially that gives Andrew, sorry, Alan two turns. Alan has got two turns to find a Zamazenta to get something rolling. If he doesn't, and there we see the second energy, the Eternatus. Does he have wow. a switch? He does. So like I said, absolutely just resetting it straight away. And I love this play because essentially this gives Alan one turn to try and make something happen. And if he doesn't, Lucario Malmoto goes down. And that really will be the game at this stage. What an incredible Marnie he gets him into that switch out. And, uh, ooh, we see a tag call. I don't think that's much different from a bird keeper, but it thins an additional two cards. I still think you take the draw here because you're going towards boss's orders. It looks like Alan even prized two copies of his boss's orders, so some of the worst prizes possible for him. Two Zamazenta and two of his four boss's orders to help you get prize cards in the first place. The Malawalana doesn't change math at all, really. You're still getting no. uh, finished off. So you will just take those additional cards. He does draw into boss's orders, which is a helpful... Little card here. You may even want to hold on to this capture energy. You want to have these attachments for uh, an eventual Zamazenta here. Yeah. But you're and hoping you can... that the Poker Doll gives you time. Yeah, and if he gets another Pokemon out, oh, and it looks like he's going for it. So that's that's enough prizes now. Unfortunately, that means and that is out of one hit KO range because of the full metal wall. And he gets the Intrepid Sword from it, but now that Zamazenta might not even make a difference if it does come out, which is a huge if at this stage, because frankly, there are now enough prizes for Andrew to win the game. It depends on just how many boss's orders are remaining for Andrew. It may be a hedge from Alan saying that you can use one more boss's orders on this Lucario Malmetal, but then if you use your fourth boss's orders on the Zacian, it won't be one hit KO'd, and I can just move out of it again. So I think that's the reason why we see it coming down now post-GX attack, because it can actually take one hit, I have to imagine that there's going to be a boss's orders play onto a Spiritomb here. It surely is the best option. I mean, you just you want to you want a cheeky look at your prizes. Because <laughs> Al Alan's game plan isn't really like I'm rushing to six prizes. Alan's game plan is come on, Zamazenta. That's pretty much all you're looking for here. So taking that cheeky KO, trying to see one of your prizes. I think you're right. It's got to be the way to go. I think because he's already commit a metal saucer and an energy drop onto this Zacian. Potentially, no. Potentially, he's not going to go for this sort of line. He's actually going to try and weave in the uh, Zacian at some point. And there's only been... Was that only one boss's orders played so far for Andrew? It must be more. We are going to see the boss's orders regardless. It may just not be a, a stacked view of the cards in the discard pile. But we are going to see the Steel Fist. is going to get a KO. 33% to try and get that Zamazenta V out of the prizes. It's pretty huge. This is such a big draw. It's a metal energy that is not what he wanted. And there's no other... Well, I suppose attaching energy... No, because it's going down. He can get a KO <laughs> with a Zashium, But I'm just... I'm trying to think it through and I'm second guessing myself here. Because it's so difficult. This is a super favourable matchup with Zamazenta. And a super difficult matchup without it. So here's the plan. The Zashium comes in... Oh, sorry. You use uh, your dolls for a couple of turns. I, I'll admit it's not a great plan. <laughs> you reset up, you doll. You sit your Caitlyn, try and get your boss's orders back. You try and boss's orders up the Crobat for two additional prize cards and then hope that the stamps give you enough time. Oh, it's a it's a hard grasp at this point. It's, there's just no good options at this stage. It's so difficult. You, th This is the opposite of what you want. I mean, the only good news for Alan at this stage is he's got to be thinking, look... It can't happen two out of three games. Of, I mean, it can. We've all, we've all, we've all been there. <laughs> if you played enough games, you have been there at some point. But oh, it looks like we're going to see Bird Keeper switching into a doll, drawing a few extra cards. Yeah, you see, it, I actually, I really prefer promoting a doll to begin with, and then you Cynthia Caitlin, because then you guarantee that boss's orders, and he only has one remaining in his deck here. So. I actually much prefer just the, the Cynthia Caitlin the previous turn, and he doesn't draw into that boss's orders, so he's just going to be feeding more prize cards here. Didn't play a reset stamp either. I feel like when you have two in your hand, it's a decent time to fire one off, because if yeah. you get bossed two times in a row here, you do lose the game. 
There are three bosses orders in Andrew's deck in total. He plays three bosses orders, doesn't play Pow Pow or any of those cards that can get it back. So if there is only one that's been played, then that will give him enough to get a two hit KO on mm -hmm. his Ashen. So it would end the game. Marnie, though. So he will be going through a Lily's Polka Doll this turn. We are going to see a communication as well. He could continue to dig with Crobat if he wishes. It does make him a little vulnerable to reset stamps at this stage, but him continually marnying uh, Alan's hand has really been helpful this entire series. Really has. There goes the Polka Doll. And no one really likes KOing a Polka Doll. You don't get any prizes for it. But it's more just, look, everyone I KO, it, it isn't an Excadrill deck, right? It ain't coming back. So... <laughs> It's just sooner or later they'll run out and then I can start doing it. He tops Ooh. the boss's orders! Okay, here we go. Boss's orders on Crobat for two prize cards. You remove your opponent's only Zamazenta answer remaining, realistically, because the evil tiles won't be getting the job done. You take two prizes, you tank a hit, and you're hoping that you can just avoid boss's orders for a long enough time to build up Zamazenta to get you over no. the line. Oh. There's Yes! One. Okay. okay. <laughs> you really were expecting, you know, drawing two out of five, you did expect to hit one there. So, Alan finally has access to that Zamazenta. There are two Metal Saucer in hand and two Energy in the discard. So, we can yeah. see a Zamazenta just be played, get free Energy on, and be attacking next turn. That is going to go straight away into an attacking position, which is, you know, quite nice. Yeah, and he's trying to turn two clock, Andrew, at this point. He says, you have to have boss over these next two turns. So that's really the play that we're seeing at this point. Finally grabbing that Zamazenta, giving him an out. But Andrew, all he needs to do is swing into this uh, active once and then have boss's orders. So really, realistically, with the hand size that Andrew's now sat at with only one boss's orders played, you have to think that Alan needs to find a reset stamp. Yeah, and it's not there. I mean, it's it's going to... Well, you're going to have to play Bird Keeper to switch. Mm -hmm and then hope you hit the reset stamp off one of those three. It's it's not the best plan I've ever heard, but it's the best one that's available given the cards in Alan's hand. Wow. And we do see it. That's Maybe insane. Maybe it was the best plan ever. <laughs> that's insane. Now Andrew has to get boss's orders from a two out of 12, basically. Suddenly, this two-turn clock... I mean, obviously, Andrew can retreat this Eternatus once it takes a hit, so you probably should still play these tag calls just a thin your outs because now it's actually Alan that needs to use boss's orders. Yeah, and that's the thing. Zamazenta, you're talking about a free hit KO. It's great at blocking as an attacker. You know, it's blocking VMAXs. You're using it against VMAXs. Well, VMAXs start at 300 hit points, so you're always free hit KOing unless you're somehow playing oh. it. In a oh, no! <laughs> that's brutal. And a Crobat. What are the, what are the chances? <laughs> what an awful reset stamp that was. That could not have been worse. Wow. I mean, oh. Alan, tough rubber the green there. I think that's the only real way you can describe that game. <laughs> Initially, you have the 1 in 50 of both Zamazentas being prized. Then you don't take it off your first prize. You finally find it and get yourself still in a position where you can win the game with a reset stamp to 1. And then your opponent still rips the boss's orders and the crowbat oh. on top. That is, that is salt in the wound, I say. That re we have seen some fortunate draws from some of the players during the broadcast today. There have been, but you know, th these players are doing the right thing. You know, we've seen deck thinning from the players. It's the way they build the deck. It's those, those extra one or two copies. Maybe if he's playing two copies rather than three, maybe he doesn't grab the boss's orders. It's deck construction. It's how you play during the game. There is obviously an element of luck coming in there. Um, I think if you're Alan, the only saving grace here is look. That was the actual worst case scenario. Both Zamas Enterprise and I reset stamped him and he still hit the perfect draw off of it. I mean, there's so much. And he even had a really bad opening hand to begin with. His opening hand was not good for a couple of turns. And you don't get this deep into the tournament unless your deck works. So it's got to go better next time, right, Joe? Yeah, and actually, I still have him favoured to win this series, realistically. We just know that the odds were stacked against him in exactly this one game. It has to be <laughs> an absurd turn of events to do that one more time. So, going into the second game, I still put him ahead. Oh, absolutely. Let's flick straight to game two and see if Andrew can continue this rather 
Um, impressive run of luck, I think is fair to say. Because you're right. I mean, this is when you bring in the Zamazenta with Eternatus. And there isn't really a great counter that Eternatus decks can naturally build in. So it is... Oh, and it's in the opening hand as well. This looks very, very different. All right. This is a huge relief. <laughs> we know that plan A can actually happen this game. He's even fine to put all of these Pokemon into play because you know that it's... You know, keeping you drawing cards throughout the entire time, the Zacian, and you know that uh, the Lucario Melmetal can still be handy for you. So, yeah, you can still go for the early game uh, Lucario Melmetal game plan, remove some energies from the opponent, put pressure on the opponent's active. And, uh, yeah, you can still draw these cards knowing that this isn't a liability prize-wise later down the line. That was a nice hit. Two energy off the Intrepid Sword there, which is only one away from actually being able to use Brave Blade. So, actually... With a switch next turn, we could see a turn two KO on that Eternatus. No, we couldn't. <laughs> Crushing Hammer, keeping Andrew a little bit safer here. Does choose that uh, bench to Zashi, and obviously that would be a threat. Otherwise, force the uh, Metal Saucer out of the opponent. Also see a switch into the Evil Tal. And we are going to see the derail this game, doing 30 and also removing the Coating Metal Energy. A small upside on that Evil Tal there. And uh, you get a little 30 poke as well, which is relevant because we've seen that sometimes the GX attack or the goggles can keep this Luke Metal out of range. So it's still setting up reasonable math for later turns. Yeah, that was really nice. I mean, there was a potential of that KO, but the Crushing Hammer, then you see the switch into the Evil Tau, then the Evil Tau gets rid of the energy just for good measure. I mean, that was about as good a turn as you could hope. But things are very, very different in this game. Andrew knows that he got very fortunate last game. He knows that those Zamazenta are the route to victory. And Andrew has got to have an answer to that Zamazenta, whether it's Spiritomb, whether it's Crobat, whether it's some combination of them, whether it's Evil Tau, maybe? Probably not. He needs some <laughs> way to KO that Zamazenta because there aren't enough prizes and Alan is just not going to bench anything else unless he is absolutely forced to. Yeah, it could be another Zamazenta, just to have both threats down. I think that's always fine. And we are actually going to see the capture energy for this. Now, both are here, both hurdles to get over. You can also play down the Lily's Polka Doll, just thinning, really. You can also use the Power Plant if he wishes, just to play around Marnie as much as possible. But instead, he's just going to end on the Intrepid Sword. And uh, yeah, now he has all the time in the world. He can just slowly attach up to Zamazentas and just be freely announcing his attacks is more or less the game plan at this stage. Yeah, it, it's exactly where he wants to be. And, you know, th this is a very, very favourable matchup. We've got Evil Tau just poking for 30. And actually, it looks like Andrew has not got exactly what he wanted. Didn't even attach an energy last turn. So his only energy is on that Evil Tau. That's not yeah. ideal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a role reversal by the looks of things. Uh, we are going to see the Cynthia Caitlin remove the power plant. He's going to grab back that Guzman Haller. And uh, we are going to see three additional cards here. Boss's orders potential options now, but he's just going to keep loading up that Zamazenta. Don't see any reason not to. He can also end on the Intrepid Sword again. Trying to set up both threats is always a good deal. He's got some sources now. I think there is one in the discard pile thanks to Crushing Hammer. So, yeah, going to be launching attacks as of next turn. And Andrew's the one who's uh, really in the hot seat and not drawing much. And this is a much, much slower version of a Zacian deck. This isn't the use altered creation and smash ADP variant. This is very much the... I think I've, I've got Metal Saucer, but I can manually attach. Now, that heads is going to make things slightly more awkward, but we know that there are actually two Metal Saucer in hand, so it's <laughs> going to be mostly irrelevant. And it is just get your Pokemon going and find your free hit KOing, but it doesn't really matter because, like, you know, Andrew's getting his Spiritomb, he's getting his Crobat. Are any of them realistically going to be able to take out a pair of Zamazenta? Well, not when there's a boss's orders play on the table as well. It could be saucer, attach, switch, boss's orders and deal with Spiritomb straight out of the gate. That's the one-off copy that Andrew plays intentionally for this matchup, realistically. And that's going to get denied immediately by Alan here. Yeah, this is such a good... I mean, he's got so many cards in hand from all those intrepid swords. We're going to see a metal saucer. We're going to see an attachment for the term. There's Ooh, a bird okay. keeper to switch into it and draw more means taking the care on the evil town not the spirit tomb and there is another there's another metal sorcerer he can play if he wishes here just to start getting his board a bit more and there we go there it comes down 
onto Lucario and Melmetal. Just going, you know what? If you do get something rolling of a bit too much energy, I got you covered. Yeah, and seeing as though Andrew has been... Well, he got the Crobat that still didn't draw into any useful cards. Essentially, didn't draw any supporter or any energy cards. So just taking the energy off the board, making Andrew have it, and seeing as though there's only been one build spite so far, the Spirit Dream's not yet a threat. So Andrew does have another Crobat here, can keep topping up his hand, but... You know, he's behind on tempo, which is one of the things you try and use to leverage this sort of matchup. And uh, he's running out of threats as well. So things are really turning pretty dicey for him. And he, I mean, he's hitting well on Crushing Hammer. I will say he's hitting three very well on those Crushing Hammers. And but... he can also derail off a, a special energy here. So the combination buys him a turn and an extra build spite. So that's not too shabby. No, and uh, this is really a case of a player in a bad matchup doing everything he can. Derail doesn't do any damage, but now there's just not the energy on the board. I mean, I don't see any energy switch in hand. A bunch of Metal Swords have already hit the discard. We've got a switch, but no real attacker to go into. So it seems like it's just manual attachment, Intrepid Sword. Yeah, seems pretty safe to me. I mean, you're still not under any pressure. The Derail is doing zero damage, and uh, <laughs> Clutch would be doing 30, so you're not worried about any of this stuff. You can go ahead and just Intrepid Sword, gain some more cards here, and yeah, you're not worried about a thing, really. No, this is going pretty gosh darn well. This is this is what Alan is absolutely looking for. It is just Zama's entering the active, and you know what? It might take a few moments, but that's okay. We only see some quick balls now. Uh, probably just more Crobat for more draw by the looks of things. Not much else going on right now. Uh, gonna grab another Eternatus, so he may even be out of Crobat, or so has a follow-up one in hand. More yeah, it does have a quick ball. Yeah. No. Just the Crobat draws by the looks of things. Oh, there we go. There's another Crobat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just so... I mean, he's not even, not even keeping up with energy. Okay. So an energy spinner is at least going to get an energy attachment. That's... Uh, yeah, he can get a drop down. I'm not even sure where he puts it at this stage. I mean, you have to anticipate with the hand size that, uh, that Alan's at that, you know... They can pick off anything they want to. They haven't used Boss's Orders just yet, but we are going to see the attachment to the Crobat. It at least forces, you know, Zashin plays. And we actually do see Amani, so going to finally keep that hand size in check. Uh, may even want to retreat out of this Evil Tower to try and buy turns and keep the attachment around. Maybe even try and clutch some other cards later on. Uh, we do see more build spite to try and make the Spirit Team a threat, but, you know, it's still really hopeful at this stage. It really is. And the thing is, you know, you've got the metal goggles on there. You've got the threat of a full metal wall. So, I mean, that, that brings Spiritomb's damage cap down considerably. And realistically, Spiritomb's like a one-shot deal. You get to attack a bit once, but Zamazenta will make quick work of it. And that's the other thing, you know, th these things like Evil Tal and Spiritomb, which in theory are very good options to try and take down a Zamazenta, actually, they're not that great because they do a tiny bit of damage and then get one shot right back. And Alan doesn't really care where the prizes come from. The only thing Alan cares about in this matchup is, please don't KO my Zamazenta. Yeah, and on top of that, there's even things like Mallow and Lana, which can heal off the chip damage that you try and do with some of these one prizes. So, yeah, overall, pretty awkward. We are going to see, actually, the tackle for Mallow Lana right now. Probably just holding it for a future turn. He can just attach and smack into this Eternatus if he wants to. I feel like it's reasonable. You don't really need too many cards. You're not afraid of anything, I don't think, on Andrew's side. I would just take the damage here over the card draw, but both seem honestly reasonable options because you can just see Andrew retreating out of this Eternatus and uh, you're still a couple of shots away from dealing with it. So either way is fine here. I don't mind putting damage into play. You don't need anything else in your hand right now. You've got uh, Zamazenta raring to go and your opponent's not throwing up any real hurdles for you. No, I mean, it would be nice to have a, a second Zamazenta ready to go, but that is pretty much the definition of greed in a matchup like this. Because, you know, it's so difficult for Andrew to try and take it down. He is working on another Spirit Tomb, but, you know, Alan, he's got this beautiful thing here where, like, oh, I can finish off the Eternatus, maybe I get the Spirit Tomb, there's an evil Tal I can get, maybe I free hit Kerr on Eternatus V Max if I'm feeling a little bit feisty. There is, or there are now, I should say, two energy on that Crobat V. So it's not a poke. It's a Pokemon we see all the time in almost every deck for the draw. We might see the fabled Crobat V attack coming in soon. 
Yeah, no switch out, unfortunately, for Andrew. So he will be sacrificing the prize cards as he goes. Alan has drawn back into uh, Tackle, which is an out to Malolana, which makes the Crobat play feel very sad. He may even want to hold on to all of these cards. There's only been two Marnies played so far. And you don't really want... To... Possibly you could play the Metal Sorcerer, but it's actually reasonable putting it onto Zashin at this point, so you instant answer the Crobat. So holding everything seems reasonable to me here. Just take the prizes while, while they're here. Yeah, I agree with that one entirely. I do like having a Zashin there because the general rule of this kind of deck is almost anything that can deal with a Zamazenta is probably not one hit KOing, but is very easily answered by Zashin. So essentially you have it there and you're like, oh, you, you've kind of like done a bit of damage. Mallow and Lana to heal up, KO with Zashin. And even if you give up the Zashin, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you look at Alan's board and you go, right, it, I don't care if the Lucario and Malmetal <laughs> gets KO'd. And I don't care if Zashin gets KO'd. That's five prizes you need more. The only one he cares about being KO'd is Zamazenta. So... I, I really just love his position here because there is nothing Andrew can use to one-hit KO with Zamazenta. And like you say, yes, that Crobat can come and do a little bit of damage and poison and all of that, but Zashin will make it go away. And we are going to see, finally, the Eternatus VMAX starting to get powered up. Also, we're going to see a uh, Galarian Zigzagoon come down. Could just be to open up the hand a little bit more here. Could also just be to damage ping something. He only plays a couple of the... Uh, Galarian Zigzagoon, so you can't even deal with anything like Lily's Polka Doll uh, too easily. But it is just going to be the Professor's Research here, getting rid of a few excess Pokemon, keeping that board space open for potentially that last Crobat if he wants to. And he is going to put that fifth damage counter onto Spiritomb, so it's at its maximum capacity here for damage. Still nowhere near enough to deal with the <laughs> Zamazenta, of course. But it does mean that this Crobat is putting some pressure on. We are going to see the 40 and the Poison come in, starting to rack up. Um... And currently, Alan can't deal with this because he doesn't actually have the energy to attack with. He could uh, Saucer to his Lucario and Melmetal if he wanted to. But we are going to see the boss's orders instead. Just deal with that Spiritomb. That gives you more time. I like this. I mean, there is a small possibility that what Andrew is actually trying to do is maybe two-hit KO the benched Zamazenta. You know, boss's orders are active. And then kind of take a two-hit KO, hoping that Alan doesn't have a switch in the meantime. And then maybe that is a route to take all six of those prizes. Essentially ignore the one in the active that's got all the energy on and just go after the one on the bench, hope for a stall. A again, we're talking about these kind of minor plays. It it's not your real preferred way of winning going into the matchup. But it's about looking at an unfavorable matchup and just trying to find anything you can that's going to give you that slight little chance of pulling it out. Yeah, the path here is getting narrower and narrower, unfortunately, for Andrew. This is the game that we all expected coming into this matchup, realistically. Zamazenta just so pesky to deal with for these Eternatus <laughs> VMAX decks. And, you know, you're hitting for 40 at a time. Poison trying to, you know, tick over some damage, but... Here it all gets wiped with the Malo and Lana play. It's the last thing you want to see in this spot if you are Andrew. And, you know, Alan can go straight back in to attack you. He could just go into a Lily's Polka Doll if he wants to. All the options are on his side and he's just churning through the deck really. And, uh, yeah, slowly getting there with the 130 pressure is easily enough right now. And this is what's so horrible about playing against this deck not only have you got Zamazenta which is blocking V maxes that alone is very difficult but then you build in the full metal wall and the metal goggles which if they're both in play you're taking 60 less damage every time you're attacked then you build in Mallow and Lana which will heal 120 of that damage off so you've got a Pokemon which is blocking your best attackers. It's really hard to one-hit KO with your backup attackers. And then you've got all of this damage reduction and healing as well. You know, we just saw basically completely heal, come back in the active, and then do 130 damage to that Crobat, which incidentally is now one hit away from the game being over. Yeah, uh, he's basically set himself up for a two-turn win because the Cynthia Caitlin just guarantees back boss's orders. You can take a few hits easily now that you've healed up. These Crobats are doing tiny bits of chip damage at this point. The second Crobat's ready to rumble, but we know that Alan can just smack into this one as well, and then both of them basically can't enter the active position again. Uh, if he does just draw into an energy card off the Cynthia and Caitlyn as well, you can take the knockout with Zashian. The boss's orders here means that you need more than just 
saucer energy attachment, you also need to have another switch out. So the Zashin's not yet ready to win the game. No, it's it's close. I was looking at that as well. I was like, oh, top decks and energy. But unfortunately, that boss's orders has somewhat ruined things. So we do see that boss's orders coming back, which will guarantee the win next turn. There was an energy, so that boss's orders did you know, give a stay for just that one turn. But I really don't think in the end this is going to be terribly relevant. We got boss's orders onto that Crobat next turn. And that's Amazenta. It can get KO'd. It can retreat. It doesn't really matter at this stage. Andrew is too far away from winning the game. We do see the retreat this turn. And uh, looks like just attacking into the Crobat. Hopefully, Andrew's not going to have... Oh, he doesn't have another boss's orders. And he just concedes. Yeah, Retreat and Smack just seem to be good enough there. Then the Crobats are no longer usable, which means he basically has nothing usable to get over <laughs> the Zamazenta V. Such an annoying card for the Eternatus player. And, you know, that's the only real time where you see the downside of Eternatus VMAX, where you're only allowed to use Dark Pokemon. So you don't have the easy options to answer Zamazenta, you know? You're limited to your Crobats, you're limited to Spiritombs and Evil Tales and Hoopers and those sorts of Pokemon, and they just don't get the job done against this tanking archetype that's built towards healing a bunch of damage, reducing a bunch of damage, and just slowly chipping away, which is exactly what happened in that second game. Yeah, it, it, Eternatus, like you say, it just does not have a good answer. It's it's very, very sad for the Eternatus player. I mean, that game, maybe it's a little bit different, but we didn't see that explosive start from Eternatus. If we see, you know, Eternatus going first and then getting that turn to attack, maybe. Maybe we see, you know, two quick KOs in succession forcing another non-Zamazenta Pokemon, or, you know, giving you six prizes of leeway to try and chip away and take out a Zamazenta. It's not a great route to victory, but it is at least an option. When Eternatus has a fairly slow start and Zamazenta hits the field, I think we're pretty much always going to see a game like we just saw. Yeah, Alan was able to just use Intrepid Sword way too much, built a really robust hand, which then let, let him have a really robust board state. So the only hope really for Andrew is that this deck isn't conventional in its draw engine. It's slow. It's drawing three cards a turn with Cynthia Caitlin, ending your turn on Intrepid Swords. That's the only way you gain hand advantage. You don't have the crazy Crobat to Dene research turns where you just draw so much. This deck is very methodical, very slow. So sometimes you have those seven cards that just don't get you anywhere and you're left with one or two stranded Pokemon that aren't Zamazenta and that's where Andrew can capitalize. No, absolutely. That is the way it goes. Well, let's head on into game three now and see which of these players is going to emerge victorious. Obviously, as we've seen in the first two games, a heavy, heavy favorite Alan is going into this game. Having that Zamazenta, which really is like a silver bullet to pretty much Andrew's only good attacker. But it's not completely hopeless for Andrew. Has won one game, admittedly in very strange circumstances. And there is, you know, he gets to go first this game. There is a chance of just, I am going to rush and win. Yeah, and uh, we just see the Zashin V start. That's something you can hit into turn two. Andrew does drop the darkness energy. That's all he needs. So we see, yeah, no draw outs at all. Zashin's vulnerable here. Oh. Coating metal energy going on. Intrepid Sword, obviously you can't put down any Pokemon that you draw. Here's Andrew's window. The Donk is on. When we say Donk, we mean taking out your opponent's only Pokemon on like your first or second turn of the game. <laughs> this is this is something Andrew is looking to do. Basically trying to steal a win really early on. And Andrew has to go hyper aggressive here. This has to be Andrew. Now he needs a fair bit. He needs an Eternatus V Max. He needs a second energy. And I believe he needs a full bench here. Or he needs a couple of Galarian Zigzagoon, and then I think he can leave one bench space. It's asking a lot. Yeah, but and he even, can win even the, game. the Zigzagoons are shut off because of the goggles as well. Oh, of course they are. My apologies. So it is going to be a full bench needed. If And he's, he's got Crobat. He can use one of those. <laughs> he's got a supporter card. If Alan Andrew sorry, can get an energy and fill his bench, he will be able to steal what should be a very unfavorable matchup with a 2-1 score. And if he can't, there's a capture energy raring to go <laughs> on Alan's side. So we are going to see the switch no. here. It can just use it freely because there's free retreat on the Evil Tail. So no reason to not play this. Uh, even if you are just using a supporter here. Crobatting just for damage because he's already used his first Crobat to draw himself some cards. Are there any supporters coming in here? I feel like yes. there has to be. Otherwise he... Uh, yeah. So 
Chose not a spinner. I'm surprised there's no spinner just to remove an energy here. Because you want to just draw into these Pokemon and slam them all down immediately. Oh, here they come. Six. No. <laughs> oh, Surely not. Might have run out of might have run out of steam. Two Pokemon away from getting the KO on Zashin here, which is absolutely terrible. And we know what's going to happen. If there is no KO here, Alan is going to capture energy as fast as he possibly can. Go and search out that Zamazenta. And then the matchup will change so much in a heartbeat. We do see the Dread End. Were it not for the Metal Goggles, that actually would have been a KO. Because mm -hmm. of the extra 30 damage and for the Galarian Zigzagoon. But that is a moot point, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Zashin's so staying. close. We get the Bird Keeper, no additional Pokemon, so it has to be Capture Energy. But that's a Zamazenta. That's Breathing Room. That, that's everything you want if you're Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's all he really needs here. Yes, he'd love to get some energy on and all of that. Oh, they're not prized. They are both in the deck. <laughs> and this game just became so much more difficult. And Andrew is just sitting there thinking, if he didn't have Goggles, or if I had two more Pokemon... But unfortunately, did not happen. Yeah, that's really rough for him. Uh, he's gonna. He didn't even build spite last turn. He just. He was committing to the hit and hope strategy <laughs> of the Eternatus over two turns. We do see a quick ball now for a second Crobat, and Evil Tal comes down. So looks like he was literally just one Pokemon away because Quick Ball and already had the other Evil Tal in hand, or vice versa. So yeah, he was super close. Uh, and you got to think, maybe if he uses that energy spinner, there's one fewer energy. Maybe he draws into another Pokemon that could have ended up being the difference. It can be that close when you get to these big games. So the dog does go down, but Andrew's now... And in, in any other matchup, Andrew's going, look how well my deck's set up. Because he'd have <laughs> the second energy on the second Eternatus V Max. But that's not how this game is going. And... It's hard to see. a. Re it, it looks like we are just heading to a game which looks very similar to game two here. Yeah, we almost saw the attachment of the coating metal energy onto the Zashin. And that surprises me. I feel like, obviously, there's already a capture energy attached to uh, Zashin, which doesn't help you at all because it can't fulfill the Brave Blade attack. It can be used for retreating if you really would like to. But I feel like you need to be putting your basic energies onto Zamazenta, really. That's my main priority. Surprising to see the capture coming onto the Lucario Melmetal. It does let you grab another Zamazenta, I guess. But I just want to see going aggressive with Zamazenta, to be honest. You've got them into play. Start using them. Is my, is, you know, it's a good <laughs> strategy. It worked last time. <laughs> it did work pretty well in game two. I mean, there is always the argument that in games like this, look, you know, you've got your Metal Saucer. So at some point in the future, you're going to be attaching, Metal Saucering, all of that. So... It looks like we're actually seeing the quite rare single energy full metal wall. Means it does not remove the energy from Eternatus. You just get that protection on all of your Pokemon. Of course, that's enough because Zamazenta, excuse me, Eternatus is maxing out at 270 damage. Now needs to do 290 and there's no bench space for Galarian Zigzagoon to do the extra 20. So now that we have seen that GX attack, the Zamazenta are even more awkward to deal with. So now we'll start seeing the energy drops onto these <laughs> Zamazentas. The only thing you want to be careful of is not using your special energies because they can be derailed off. Uh, we are going to see the Tackle here, grabbing that other Lucario Melmetal and Guzmahala, just taking them out of the pool to draw into. We're going to see the Cynthia Caitlin getting rid of Tool Scrapper. That's not a helpful card. We're going to grab back Bird Keeper, just growing that hand size once again. We do start seeing Boss's Orders. These are important cards, so you can be proactive into the Spiritomb, proactive into these Crobats. We are seeing the Switch card here, and we're actually seeing the energy up into the active. Kind of surprising for me, because it's almost like you're baiting the Crobat into the active position from the opponent here. Yeah, I was, I was honestly, I was thinking pretty much the exact same thing. You know, one to block, one to build up on the bench and come in as an attacker later. But you've always got stuff like Mallow and Lana to heal off. There's plenty of switching cards, and... And it, it must be quite sad for Andrew here because he's looking at the field and he's like, well, look, there's five super easy prizes that I can take with Spiritomb or whoever at this stage. And actually, it doesn't really matter. We see Spiritomb come active. We see the Marnie. 
And it looks like Andrew is going to basically try and kind of poke Zamazenta a few times and see if it falls over. Combined with Amani, maybe? But we're talking about kind of a free hit KO here. Yeah, I mean, he was hoping really off the money to find more crushing hammers. I think that's the main thing he was looking for here. But uh, yeah, this small hit and hope strategy, not the worst. You can attach to the Lucario Melmetal to try and have an instant response to the Spiritomb. Uh, there are no energies currently in the discard pile that are usable, so you can't just pay retreat and use Lucario and Melmetal, unfortunately. You can attach active and just Intrepid Sword and re-establish that hand. So I think ultimately it's going to be fine. Even draws into a tag... Uh, call now which is actually really helpful also it is but i'm kind of i'm kind of digging where andrew's at right now because now this spirit tomb is going to put that zamazenta into legitimate could be ko territory then maybe finish it off with something like a, an evil tal or another spirit tomb or whatever next turn the problem is we can see the tag call in alan's hand and mm. i would be very surprised if we didn't see a mallow and lana coming down next turn yeah, it absolutely certainly will be that card coming down next turn because <laughs> you can just go straight into your Lucario Melmetal attached for turn and deal with this heavily damaged Spiritomb. And like we said, these are sacrificial prizes. You don't mind that the Lucario Melmetal is super heavily damaged. You can allow Andrew those cards. That's not a problem for you. So we are going to see the tag call. He can go ahead and thin the second Lucario Melmetal out of the deck. I think I would always take that over the Guzma Hala here just because you know you never, ever use that card. Regardless, it's going to be discard fodder no matter what. And uh, he could, yeah, so he could also pay retreat and attack with the Zamazenta that's almost ready to go. But I, I do really like using the Steel Fist here with the uh, Lucario Melmetal. Yeah. Yeah, I like this a lot. You take the prize, you KO the Spiritomb, and you're going to be giving up that free prize Pokemon. And like we said, it, it just does not matter. So you go ahead, you take out one of your opponent's options, and Andrew was close. There's another game similar to this one where Alan doesn't have access to the Mallow and Lana, and Andrew is able to sneak a KO onto that Zamazenta, and at that point, it is on. He can go after those other five prizes, and the game looks drastically different. But he had the Mallow and Lana, so that's not this game. We are going to see... Keeping that Guzma Hala means he can attack this turn just by searching out a coating metal energy for Zamazenta. So he can begin to pressurize uh, the opponents. Also now has Metal Source alive. Only one target right now, but still going to help that sort of resurrection pool of getting back those energies to build up secondary Zamazenta. Seeming pretty decent for him right now. Yeah, it's going all right. Some He's awkward discards here. You don't really like getting rid of boss's orders, but... Feels like you have to. There's still so many crushing hammers in Andrew's deck. Only one played so far that you want to safeguard against those and keep the sources around, I'd imagine. And you can always uh, Cynthia Caitlin back boss's orders. So I feel like you should probably... I mean, the Lucario Melmetal always gets discarded. It's whether you want oh, to yeah. get rid of boss's orders or the sorcerer. I feel like boss is probably the worst card. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. It's recoverable and it's not doing anything for you right now. Whereas that Metal Saucer, or in the next turn or two, whereas that Metal Saucer absolutely can. And at the end of the day, unless you actually deck out, Zamazenta really can just hit everything and then come round to KOs in like 20 turns time. You'd rather not, that <laughs> game would go on a while, but you don't really care. As long as you're not having that Zamazenta KO'd, you can attack as often as you like into as many different Pokemon as you like, and it doesn't matter if it's taken a while to get those KOs. Here comes the Venus, Venomous Fang hit. The only sort of awkward thing for Alan right now is that he has no draw in his hand. He may even take a turn to Intrepid Sword here because if you let the poison tick over too much and the Crobat do too much work, you're actually in a little bit of trouble. I do like hitting the Crobat. It makes some sense, but if ever the Zamazenta is actually dealt with, you're terrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. If that Zamazenta goes down, I think Andrew becomes a favorite in this game easily. So that's got to be your number one priority. Protect the Zamazenta. So we do see a boss's, boss's orders. Order. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this. They can easily just retreat back out if you bring up either of these. It's not too much work for them. This feels like a wasted boss's orders to me. Unless he's just trying to draw more cards to find Malolana and buy himself turns. It feels like you either want to hit the Crobat or just hold the boss's orders so you can shorten your win condition later. He does draw into Tag Call, though. That's a really big deal. 
Yeah, I mean, assuming Cynthia and Caitlin and Mallow and Lana are in his deck, they are basically the two the two cards he's going to be looking for in the near future, unless he can just draw into boss normally. So, I like this. I mean, like you say, it, it's just it's protect Zamazenta. So you've got that Mallow and Lana potentially now. You can heal up the Zamazenta. It's going to come back to your turn with probably some damage on if Andrew gets an attack. No, so actually that is the perfect amount of damage to just heal off with Mallow and Lana. And oh look, there is a boss's orders ready to go in the future as well. And uh, an easy discard here now. He can get rid of the backup Zashin. You certainly don't need that card. The metal goggles as well because no more Pokemon are hitting the board. Those are the easy two discards. You're never going to use those. So you just <laughs> toss those two. You go into your doll and retreat out. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, not retreat out. You can reset your doll to the bottom, I should say. And now you can just start poking. Or you can go into your other Zamazenta and just chill again. Yeah. Intrepid sword. Yeah, seems decent. Not a problem. Uh, Alan is not really under any time pressure here at all. Like I say, and unless it looks like he might actually start decking out, he can take his time. He's got five prizes left to take, but the combinations are near endless. There is an Eternatus, which is... You know, one energy on its Ashen away from being KO'd. How is he doing for boss's orders? Because there is a potential here to just boss's orders, KO with a Zamazenta, and then just take out that Eternatus with Ashen, and that would be the game. Yeah, I think he plays a full four complement of sorry, a full complement of four. So still two remaining available to him. So he can just start swinging into these guys, force Andrew to have the switch outs, and just, you know, churn through this guy while it's still here. Make Andrew make the decisions, and you can save those bosses' orders for later. Yeah, you don't, like I say, you know, there, there is an aggressive route to winning in a couple of turns, but you, you're not really under any pressure to actually do it. Now, we do see a boss's orders coming down to go after that Zashium. That was a better attacker. It was always going to go down at some point, so Andrew just getting rid of something that could have, well, finished off the Eternatus this turn rather than next turn unlikely to make much of a difference honestly in the game as a whole now this does allow him to be reset stamped down to a one card hand but andrew at this stage needs to ko a zamazenta and it is really that simple if he ko's the zamazenta that will be the game over doesn't need any other ko's but we're still at that stage we've been at all game where you look at the board and you're like all right what's gonna ko a zamazenta <laughs> Yeah, uh, within about six turns, <laughs> nothing really. So we're, we're still miles away here. Andrew, I like denying the uh, the Zashin the draw, the Intrepid Sword. That's pretty good. Um, you take the prizes that are available, use the boss's orders while it's there. Uh, we only see a great ball here. Not for any target that he wants. He can profess his research, drawing into a fresh seven here. Needs to find switch out, otherwise you give up the easy three prize knockout. And you want to start poisoning again. You want to just put some pressure into this Zamazenta. Yeah, I, f I feel like there was one turn where Andrew really was in a decent position to potentially pull it out. And it was that turn where he got the Zamazenta essentially into range. And it was just, I, I feel like if Alan had just whiffed that Mallow and Lana for one turn, mm -hmm. things could have been so much different. But Andrew now, he hit the Professor's Research back down to a one card hand with Reset Stamp. Eternatus goes down. And now Alan just needs two prizes to, to finish out and win this game. Probably not going to win next turn because Amazenta really does not hit that much damage. And you know what? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Andrew, mulling over what to promote. Uh, he has free retreat on his evil tile, so that's always fine. You could see a derail here, potentially get rid of an energy card from Zamazenta. You're hoping really that you can just run Alan out, but there's just so many cards remaining in his deck and a lot of them are still energy and metal sources so you basically never stop the zamazenta from hitting you unfortunately but i think that's the only route you have at this stage no i mean he's got free energy and two metal saucer in hand he is absolutely not shy of energy cards and that's just what's in his hand and andrew knows how many he's playing so marnie is going to come down and give alan a slightly smaller hand the derail is obviously going to be able to get rid of that coating metal energy maybe it slows him down for a turn, but no, we see it. Oh, ah, that could have made things more interesting. Yeah, there's still two Crushing Hammers rooting around Andrew's deck as well. So a few more discards in there and he'd have been in good shape. But yeah, missing the heads this time. The derail now seems like a much worse prospect. You force Alan to have an energy in a four card hand or a five card hand, I should say. Uh, but yeah, he's got loads of those. <laughs> so he can just swing 
Uh, you can also thin the deck with Tag Call now as well. It just gets rid of a Guzma Hala and uh, yeah, improves his draws for future turns. Yeah, it's so difficult. You know, everything Andrew's trying is maybe, but it's just that the <laughs> margins are so small. Maybe if I can derail and hit a Crushing Hammer and Marnie him, and he doesn't draw energy for a little while and I can get a few free hits in. Maybe if I can hit with Crobat and Poison and he whiffs the Mallow and Lana for a couple of turns. There are routes to victory. It's not an unwinnable game. But you know Andrew's got to be thinking at some point during this game, like, if he didn't have Metal Goggles, I had the KO. <laughs> it could be a Boss's Orders derail play on the backup uh, Zamazenta as an option here. You know that your Crobat can take a hit, so you can just retreat into that. You are losing to Boss's Orders at any point at this point, um, if you are Andrew's side. But uh, I feel like just getting the swing in is really all you can do at this stage. Yeah, you, you got to play it out. you got to do what you can do. Take a swing, hope. We don't see the boss's order, so it is just a, a venomous fang. We see the poison damage coming in as well. There is still a chance that Andrew can really slow the game down, but now we see both the Zamazenta having the energy on. We see the assault tackle. And I think we might have got to that point where even the really slim, maybe, <laughs> chances that Andrew once had are disappearing. Absolutely are, because now Andrew has to move out of this Crobat. He can't use it again, essentially, unless he's able to get two Crushing Hammer heads consecutively. Um, and yeah, he doesn't really have any more time that he can buy with any of his other Pokemon. Uh, he could just send in other Crobats to take hits but a couple of turns, but that's not really helping him in his goal here, apart from one damage tick of poison. No, unfortunately, it really isn't looking very good. And we do see the Crobat coming in to, to buy that turn and get that tick of poison. But, oh, still no. So the game isn't over yet. We are seeing Bird Keeper. And this is what we were saying a minute ago. Like, he can, if he wants to, just attack into every Pokemon until there is nothing left that can take a hit. That is a slow and laborious route to victory, <laughs> but it's a route to victory. But it turns out he did actually draw the boss's orders off of the Bird Keeper. So I don't think this game's got very long to go. And it doesn't. Andrew looks like he has conceded. And the heavy favorite takes it home in the end. Yeah, it took a long time. But 